Alright, this is Melvin Ramon. Let's talk about music. It's round two. So this past week, I was searching around on Discogs, and I found a copy of this. This is Bass Holes, uh, When My Blue Moon Turns Red Again. It is, I think, their fourth album? It's a double album. Uh, not much in here, and just uh, records, but they did have some pretty cool-looking sleeves with some nice pictures of the band. Uh, they were a blues punk or garage punk band from, I think it's Columbus, Ohio, uh, in the 90s and into the 2000s. I think the uh, guitar player singer is still around under his name, Don Holland. The other guy, Lamont Ben Thomas, does another project I'll be talking about in a second. This is, uh, like I said, it's bluesy, it's punky. There's a Joy Division cover on here. Um, I, you know, I hate to do something like compare it to White Stripes, but it is a two-piece bluesy, punky guitar thing. Uh, great songwriting, just really raw, raw performance and uh, production. Um, I think fans of White Stripes who are going to, for something deeper would find that very, very interesting and exciting uh, to, to stumble into. Um, definitely a good thing. So anyway... Uh, the drummer's other project, or more recent project, is Obnox, or Obnox, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. What he's doing with this is kind of like a cross between uh, hip-hop and garage punk, sort of. I, it's really hard to describe. I don't really know anything else like it, to be honest. Um, but if you're looking for something unique and raw... And that, that that's bringing together some uh, some styles. I mean, this he's this is not really like anything else. He has he, he's done a ton of records. There's like ten of them, and it's only in the last few years. Uh, he cranks this stuff out. All of them are good. This is uh, Corrupt Free Enterprise. This is one of the first ones. I don't know if that means it's a little bit harder to come by, but uh, if you just see his name or you know you look for it to stream, I think you'll be happy. I have also recently acquired this. The Melvins, Pincus Abortion Technician. Uh, if you might have guessed, my screen name uh, comes from the Melvins. They are my favorite band. Uh, this is their most recent record. The name Pincus Abortion Technician is a reference to uh, Jeff Pincus, who is a former bass player of the Butthole Surfers, who is one of the two bass players, along with Stephen McDonald, of Red Cross, who plays on this album. Uh, I, I guess this album maybe hasn't gone over as well, super well with the fan base. I really like it. It's also kind of something that just happens with them. They put out a new record. Everybody wants to hear what they were doing five years ago. Uh, it's a little catchier, a little poppier. There are actually two Butthole Surfers covers on here, and a James Gang cover, and a Beatles song. Um, this is a double 10 inch. This is, I think, the standard edition of the album. There was also a limited edition LP of it on Amphetamine Reptile. If you watched my last video, it's a similar art project thing with a woodcut cover. Um, definitely, uh, I, I like it. Uh, you know, it might not be a thing for a lot of people. But speaking of Melvin's related things, uh, these guys, Big Business, have a new record out. Uh, for a while, the members of Big Business, they are a bass drum duo, joined the Melvins for a guitar, bass, and double drum lineup. This is the new, newest project from uh, Big Business. It's called The Beast You Are. It was out on their own label, I think. I can't remember what the name of uh, Eagle Metal Revisit or something, records. Um, it's, it's bass and drums, but they also play a lot of synth on it. Um, really interesting stuff. Noise rock or sludge, somewhere in that to, uh, category. I'm not sure what people would put it in. Definitely something that I'm excited about. Uh, it's really good and pounding heavy. Kind of has a unique sound to it. A ton of energy. If you get a chance to see those guys live, they are they put on a fantastic show. They also just have a great sense of humor. Um, you know, abdominal snowmen. Uh, complacency is killing you. Uh, El Pollo will take the good package. They have kind of unique and kind of uh, funny. Let them grind. Uh, song titles and lyrics. Um, definitely uh, something something I'm into, something you might be into. This is 
a collaborative record between High Five Club and Fatso Jetson. I got this a little bit ago. Kind of need to still give it a few listens. It's a collaborative record. It's not so much in the heavy desert rock uh, sound that uh, that Fatso Jetson is known for. Uh, it's a little more kind of jammy, I think. Uh, like I said, it's on white vinyl. I do need to give it a few other spins kind of to, to uh, decide how much I like it. But it's definitely enjoyable. And if you, you haven't heard Fatso Jetson, pretty much everything they've done is great. Uh, they're kind of connected to Queens of the Stone Age and Caius. And they kind of have a similar type sound. A little bit looser, a little bit more laid back. Still, you know, really heavy and kind of psyche. Or, well, stony. I would guess um, desert rocky, but uh, they're, they're their own thing. They they were actually doing it before Caius, um, and uh, they they have a pretty great sound. This is a record. Another one I picked up while just kind of going around. This is by King Snake Roost. It is uh, Roost. I'm sorry. It is from Barbarism to Christian Manhood. This is from the '90s. It is a Australian punk or noise rock label record on the amphetamine leptile label uh, if you know what amrep does it's, it's going to be in there it's a little bit bluesy not too far off from something like the birthday party or the scientists um but one of the king snake roost were one of the kind of bigger bands in that scene and that is one of their more well-known records um so definitely something worth checking out also a relatively new one or relatively new to me not really the, the album isn't I've been streaming it and had downloads of it for a long time uh, this is a relatively recent uh, reissue by of Don Cherry Brown Rice I think it was also released as a self-titled record um, it's kind of uh, it's from the 70s uh, you know Don Cherry is known for a lot of his free jazz stuff but also got into kind of some world mu music angles and this definitely has you know kind of a world music vibe but it's real loose and you know kind of funky kind of just it's just amazing music it's the kind of thing I put it on in the morning and just feel good all day um, really really happy that someone pressed it on vinyl I was looking for I mean I was even gonna just take a CD if I could find it because it was just eluding me except you know uh, for getting it shipped from Europe for a lot of money um, so I'm glad that there's a reissue I guess some people had had some problems with it mine sounds great I think it sounds real nice and quiet and smooth I'm real happy with it I'm super ecstatic to have that in the collection uh, well speaking of free jazz it's not really free jazz but in relation to Ornette Coleman who Don Cherry played with this is a band called Royal Trucks I bring that up because they described themselves in their heyday as a harmelodic rock band uh, their early albums sound just really smacked out crazy like almost like they don't even know what they're doing with their instruments there's a ton of atmosphere but it's super raw super abstract as they moved along they became more and more of a like Rolling Stones ish rock and roll band uh, but they still they actually managed to make the Rolling Stones sound clean and sober um, some inner sleeve artwork this is their fourth album it's called cats and dogs this is kind of from the point where they started to just really sound rock and roll but kind of fucked up <laughs> i saw them uh a little bit before this era open for sonic youth sonic youth was touring on dirty so they were at the peak of their mainstream you know alternative rock acceptance and these guys came out just completely blown out of their minds and just made a bunch of racket and you know copped a bunch of attitude on stage and at the as i was watching it i was like oh man this is terrible but then i watched how the i was with my roommate at the time and this this these girls that he was this girl that he was dating and her friend and they were just super turning their head noses down on it rejecting it and i kind of came to understand that in the way that these people were rejecting it this this is kind of something really crazy and out there and I checked into their records and looking back on it I came to understand like this is just a great band as they went on like I said they they kind of pulled it to get together a little more became a pretty great rock and roll band um, at one point John Theodore who wound up playing with the Mars Volta uh, played drums with them around that era I mean of course there's gonna be a lot of crazy percussion going on uh, on it and uh, 
it it just became they just became a really great rock and roll band, really good and raw. Um, the singer guitar player Neil Michael Haggerty, prior to that was in Pussy Galore with uh, John Spencer and uh, a number of other people who kind of moved around in that sort of arty New York scene. Um, they actually managed to get on a major label, uh, lasted for two records, apparently walked away from the label with their master tapes and all the money somehow, uh, and then continued to progress even more. Um, definitely, if, if you like, you know, really good raw rock and roll and you have an open mind to stuff that can often be very abstract and kind of crazy and kind of weird, uh, those guys are definitely something to look into. They've gotten back together. They have a new record out this year uh, that I think is a really a really nice sort of return, kind of getting back into it. Um, they have twice now uh, rec uh, uh, announced concerts in Detroit playing with Wolf Eyes and canceled them. The first one, there was some drama, and then they just said that they delayed it, and they re rejected the notion that the band was falling apart again. Um... The second time, I haven't heard what the story is, but I imagine it's kind of the same thing, them being flaky. They are a former couple. It's, uh, there's Neil Michael Haggerty there. Jennifer Harama is the other one. I saw her last summer actually play with a number of kind of grunge or alternative rock uh, people, including Mike uh, Watts, Jay Maskus, Mark Arm, and Kim Gordon at a tribute concert to the Stooges. Uh, in Ann Arbor. It was for Ron Ashton's 70th birthday. I think it was 70th birthday. It was uh, it, just a great show and she did a fantastic job along with the others of performing the Stooges songs. Not quite I think as good as Mark Arm and uh, Kim Gordon did but still great. Um, speaking of kind of abstract and crazy, this is another one I picked up recently. I saw, picked this up at the show. This is by Thou, I think the title is The House Primordial, but everything's kind of written on it in a sort of uh, really small writing and kind of almost handwritten. It's, uh, it's allegedly an EP, but it's almost 40 minutes long, it's, uh, but a lot of their stuff is really, really long. Uh, they do, uh, it's kind of a really abstract and experimental take on sludge rock, very similar to... Uh, what the body does, if you're familiar with them, um, you know, obviously influenced by things like uh, like Neurosis and the Melvins, but still very much their own thing. They've actually collaborated with the body, um, and they they do a lot of split records. Uh, and I actually have somewhere, maybe I'll show it another time, a record they did of all Nirvana covers, but really heavy and screaming. It's a great record. This is another just great, you know, just. Similar to Primitive Man, if you're familiar with them, just heavy, crushing, uh, you know, just brutal, brutal sludge stuff. Really recommend those guys. They have a ton of stuff out, uh, and I haven't heard any of it that isn't great or really good anyway. Uh, and one more, the last one, it's a big shift of gears. Uh, this is the new record by Shovels and Rope. Uh, not much to show, they kind of have this, this motif with the lyrics. Uh, they are a Americana duo. They're a husband and wife. They play everything themselves. Um, they have uh, it's kind of a kind of a rootsy sound, a little bit rock and roll, a little bit little bit country, a little bit folk, a little bit kind of bluegrassy here and there. Um, just really great songs that I just that really you know really kind of get me in the feels, get me excited, um, get me singing along. This is their uh, one, two, three, four, fifth album of originals, and they also have two albums of covers, and then they also have an early release that contains, um, some, uh, records that they made before they got together, um, but, uh, all of it, all of it's just very worth hearing if you're a fan of Americana type stuff, um, you know, if you like you know, thoughtful singer-songwriter type stuff. I think you will really, really enjoy them. One of my favorite, favorite things going. Um, and then one more, another sort of <laughs> big shift of gears. Kind of all over the place tonight. I just sort of pulled together kind of an almost random pile. This is actually a CD. Uh, let's see if I can do this without the glare. There we go. This is, whoops, there we go. This is 
uh, the new album by Full of Hell. I actually have the album order. That's a promo CD I got from the, the record store I work at. Uh, I, supposedly these guys are hardcore with leaning into a little bit of grindcore and a little bit of noise. I don't know. It kind of sounds like grindcore to me or just a bunch of yelling. I love it. Just good, heavy, screaming stuff. A lot of kind of abstracted noise packet passages. A uh, ton of energy. Uh, I saw him last year. Really enjoyed the show. I'm going to see him again soon uh, with Primitive Man. So it's going to be a good, heavy show of just gnarly, gnarly screaming. Super excited about that. Super pumped. Uh, and that's all the stuff I, I had ready to go. Let's just pull out a random record here. Um, just for the hell of it, this is Ween. Um, live in Toronto. This is a record from their tour with the country band. Uh, it's a live record. Uh, this is actually recently reissued, but this is a very old pressing. Um, great live record. Uh, they do a bunch of their songs, a bunch of the country songs, and a bunch of their other songs in the country style. Um, but with, you know, that sort of classic ween sense of humor. Um, anyway, uh, I think that's about, about, about enough for now, rambling on. Uh, love to hear your comments. This is still my second video, still working on the style. Uh, love, love to hear some tips and such and so forth. Thanks for watching, and have a wonderful night.